This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Hello and welcome to The Unstoppable Indian. Every week we take a journey into the life of an outstanding Indian, a person whose talent, acumen or moral example is transforming India. The best, the finest from every field join me, Manvi Dhillon, on this show to share their life story, their journey to success, the knocks along the way, what made them get up and keep going, what makes them an unstoppable Indian. My guest today is someone who picked up a golf club at the age of nine and never put it down. 36-year-old Jeev Milka Singh has taken Indian golf to the world, and that's saying something in a country that's really obsessed with cricket. He turned pro in 1993. He was the first Indian golfer to qualify for the European Tour, the first Indian golfer to qualify for the US Open, but his most phenomenal year was in 2006. He won four major titles across the world, of course, leapt up in the global golf rankings. Jeev, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. I know this is a very precious time for you because it's just a few days that you spend at home every year, but thank you for making the time. I'm glad I'm here. Thank you for having me here. You know, I want to go back to 2006. It was such a phenomenal year for you. Uh, when you look back at that year, can you actually pinpoint what motivated you to have such an outstanding year? I guess um, when I started the year, I w I've been playing well for the last six years. It's just that uh, my thought process and my management on the golf course wasn't that good. And what I just simply did was that I said, I'm not going to be result-oriented this year. I'm going to just try and make the most out of what I have out of my game and just focus on hitting a good golf shot and playing the golf course. Instead of when I'm in the hunt, I get close to the leaderboard, I start looking at the scores, I put pressure on myself, and I used to slide back. And that was the only change. I was not result-oriented, just focused on process and routine, and that uh, worked really well for me for 2006. You know, the years before that um, were tough, like you said yourself. You weren't getting a complete grip on uh, your game, and you know, there were, I'm sure, all sorts of other pressures. Uh, you must have questioned yourself. Your family may have urged you towards domesticity. Those seven years preceding 2006, how did you pull through? I don't like giving up. I'm a person uh, who's always um, wanted to give the best in whatever I do. And that kept me going. And I always believed in myself that I was good enough to win. And that came through after seven years in 2006. And the reason was that I hung in there, I started working hard again, and I was doing that earlier too, but like I said, the management and the process and routine came into play in 2006 in the right manner and everything fell into place. You know, the, the rankings in golf um, open and close doors to tournaments and you know, there's a seesaw of rankings. How does that really affect you? It doesn't bother me too much. You know, I've always believed that uh, after six years of drought, if I can come back and win uh, four tournaments in a year, this year was an average year for me. If I don't perform that well for another two, three months coming next year, it won't bother me. I'm just going to hang in there. But I believe in myself that I will come back and I'm going to win more tournaments. So that's what keeps me going and it's going to be a good year, 2008. You know, in some ways, when you've had like a phenomenal year, your benchmark just rises so dramatically. So, you know, do you think that when you look back at 2007 and say, well, it's been average, does it hurt more than it did before? No, it, it does hurt. But, uh, you know, it's like a, a wake up call for you, you know. Maybe you need to work harder on your mental side, maybe on other things in your game. So it's always a learning process. That's the way I take it. And that what pushes me to become better. And um, that's what I'm going to do for 2008. It was tough, but it's over. It's the past. I've got to look at the future. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're here in Chandigarh, and, uh, you know, this is where it all began. So I want to go back to uh, the beginning. Why golf? My dad started golf, and I went with him, and there were a lot of young kids playing golf at that age. Uh, I was about, I think, 10. And there were other guys who were playing too. And I had a good group of four or five guys. We used to play together. We used to have fun. Then after that, we basically um, went our ways. 
Uh, and um, I went to college in the US. I did really well in the NCAAs. After that, um, I decided that I want to be a professional golfer because I spoke to my coach, do you think I'm good enough? Because golf that time wasn't too big in our country. And taking up golf as a profession, people always thought golf was played for fun. Taking it up as a profession was kind of a big change. But I was very fortunate because I came from a sporting background. And parents backed me up and said, okay, if you want to take the plunge, go ahead. And there's no looking back. And I've always thought about changing profession when I've, I've gone through some bad times. But um, I don't know anything else I can do, you know. I love the game. I'm making a living out of what I love doing. And I think I'm very fortunate. God's been kind. And um, so far, it's been good to me. And we're all glad that you didn't... Uh quit uh, golf. You know, you talked about your sporting family, your father, of course, Milka Singh. You know, everybody um, remembers uh, that, that phrase, uh, the flying sick. He, he was a formidable athlete. Uh, your mother was an international volleyball player as well. Yes. It, was it in your destiny? It had to be sport. Look at the environment you grew up in. Not really. They always pushed me uh, academically and they said that, you know, you've got to become, you've got to have a professional qualification. But I think, I don't know, I just, things changed and I had the right opportunities at the right time and everything fell into place. And I think, like I said, I'm very fortunate that um, I'm making a living out of what I love doing. Your father, was he a tough sort of taskmaster when you decided this is it? This is it, I'm going to make my life in golf. Then what kind of role did your father play? He was so tough. I, I used to have so many arguments <laughs> with him. And I used to say, man, I couldn't have a, had a worse father. <laughs> I used to always have arguments with him. He used to always tell me, be disciplined. You've got to go to weight training. You've got to work hard. You've got to practice for so many hours. If the results didn't show, he'd say, no, that's not good enough. And I said, no, this is different from athletics. You know, this is golf. It's it, The results don't come that fast. And there's a... Uh, in athletics, you have a lifespan of like five to ten years, but in golf, you've got to carry on till the age of 50. Dad, results are going to come later. No, but he never, he used to always push me, and um, I think now I understand why, but I think in a very friendly way, but we always had our differences. We still do, and uh, it's natural, but um, end of the day, we sit down, and now things are great, and and I, I, I really respect them for the way they brought me up and um, the way he pushed me. I'm sure it takes a lot to understand a sports person's mind. And, you know, to that extent, I think you were lucky to have parents who could help you in that process. But when you look at your mentor in golf, I mean, is it outside your family? Yes, I think uh, when I was playing college golf in the U.S., it was uh, Freddie Couples. A um, lot of respect for that man, the way he conducts himself the way he handles himself on the golf course, uh, the way he plays the game. Um, I think that what brought me um, to understand that, um, you know, if he has done so much for the game, Jeev, you've got to look up to him and do something like that. And hopefully I can. I'm still trying, and I feel that I've still got a few years in me, and uh, hopefully I can do a lot uh, more in this game and do something like what Freddie Couples has done. But um, besides that, I must say, Tiger Woods, what he's done for the game of golf, um, I think every professional golfer should be thankful to him because he's uh, taken the level, the standard. Um, he's brought in more money, more popularity into the game. Um, I think every golfer is uh, thankful to him for what he's done for the game of golf. And you've also said in the past that you admire him as a person as well as admire him as a golfer. Yes, he's a great human being. Um, uh, besides being a great golfer, I think he's an excellent human being. Uh, he's humble, he's down to earth, he gives due respect to his fellow competitors. That's the beauty about that man. Do you still have a source of inspiration for your game? Or is it too naive to ask that question? No, I do. I, I, I feel that, um, like I said, I've got a few years in me. And when I play um, the tour and I see uh, guys who are elder to me doing well, I feel that, hey, if they can do it, why not me, you know? So, like, Vijay is doing so well at the age of 45. I said, if he can last for so many years, why not me? You've, you know, it, it, there, uh, there are options for a human being to pick out if, if he wants to look at the negative or the positive. 
and I'm looking, I, I want to look at the positive. I would like to see something like VJ, Greg Norman, who've done so much at the age of 40 or 45. So if they can do it, they're human too, why not me? You're subtly telling us that you got a long innings ahead of you still. <laughs> That's the way I feel right now. You know, tell me, how do you work at your game? I mean, a lot has been written about your distinctive swing, uh, but really uh, the whole process, examining your flaws, correcting your flaws, spotting your flaws. I've, I believe you go through your mm, game videotapes very carefully, but what's the technique? I, uh, I have a different kind of swing, I agree. Um, but I'm, I like to keep things simple. End of the day, what counts in golf is the least amount of shots you put the golf ball in. And I believe that I can swing it any which way I want, but if I put a good number on the board, that's what's gonna matter, end of the day. And if for four days I can do that, I'll be a winner. So that's the way I look at things. I obviously go through a few changes in my swing. Um, with a friend who helps me out with my game. And that's part of the deal, everybody does that. But I obviously like to keep things simple. If I get too technical, it's not gonna work for me. People say you're very disciplined. And I suppose, you know, you've chosen to spend so much time on the road, you just have to be disciplined. Is it really true or are it people is. exaggerating? No, it is, it is true. I, I am quite disciplined on the road, but when I'm on a holiday, I'm not disciplined at all. And I can't be because I'll go mad otherwise <laughs> if I'm disciplined all the time. But on the road, you have to be. There is a set uh, routine which I follow. And I think it's very important if you have a routine off the golf course, you can follow it very well on the golf course too. So it works both ways. And you've chosen the rigors of travel. Many don't. Yes, I have. See, I love playing golf and I like playing tournament golf. I feel that after two to three weeks of uh, pressure golf, my game gets better, and um, that's why I keep playing more tournaments. And people say, how come, Jeev, you play 40 tournaments all over the world? Don't you feel tired? I just say, I just love it. And I'm comfortable doing it right now. That's why I'm doing it. Maybe in a few years from now, maybe I won't do that. Yeah. What's your deepest fear at the moment? Uh, no fear. I'm not going to think about any fear, and I don't have any fear right now. Your wrist injury, it troubled you. Does that cross your mind as a worry area once in a while? Not really. See, I think uh, in a sportsman's life, you have to be injured. You work hard, you torture your body basically. Uh, you're not giving it enough rest. It's got to catch up. And that's when you've got to say, hey, the body's saying no now. It's time to take a week off or two weeks off. And it comes and goes, and you've got to make the most out of it.